Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well and I hope you're having a good week. Today I'm going to do a straight pour and I'm just going to use three colour tones. I'm going to use black, white and gold. And I'm going to use a 20 by 20 inch deep edge canvas and I'm just going to have a bit of fun. I haven't done a straight pour for a while. I love those three tones. When I first started doing fluid art, I did a very similar piece um, for one of my clients. It was a commission piece and I could see all different kind of shapes, different animals in that piece. I'm not trying to recreate that because every piece I do is unique, but I want to go back to those three tones because I think it's really effective and had a lot of fun. So let's see what we can create. Okay, so what I thought I'd do is, I've had people ask me, what do I do on the backs of my canvas? Now, sometimes I just leave them. Other times I tape them off just so it's a bit neater, especially when I'm doing um, a technique that requires me to pick up the canvas, tilt it where a pen goes off the edges. Um, it's just a bit neater, especially if um, that's the preference from a client. So I'm just gonna tape off the, uh, the back of the canvas now. I find it's easy to um, to create designs, but sometimes it's all about the preparation. Okay, I thought I'd do this because people have asked me how I prepare my, my creation. And the kind of colour palette that you're going to use and the, the actual technique that you're going to use. So there's a lot of things to consider um, in the preparation before you actually do a piece. So I'm just using my spirit level just to make sure that the canvas itself is flat. So the paint doesn't run off one edge. Um, it has to be flat. Um, so this is just what I do. This is what I do literally before I pour the paint. Okay, so let me just show you the colours I'm using. So I'm using a Titanium White by Montmartre. Very, very thick, ring pour consistency. Very creamy. And then I'm also using Rich Gold by Windsor & Newton. It's a really gorgeous gold. And I'm also using a Mars Black by Windsor & Newton. Again, the same consistency for all three colours. What I would call my uh, ring pour consistency. You can check out my video on how I mix my paints. And today I'm using Liquitex as my pouring medium. So I've got my three colours and now I'm going to layer my cup. Okay, so I'm going to layer my cup and because I've just got those three colour tones, I'm just going to layer them on top of each other one by one until I get to the uh, to the top of the cup. So I've put black in, now the gold and now the white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hopefully get about three or four layers of those three tones in this cup. So black gold white black gold white and i'm going to do that all the way up to the top of the cup so this reminds me when i when i first started out doing fluid art i did um some very basic techniques and one of those was the um the ring pour a straight pour or a dirty pour and um it brings back good memories actually by layering these colors and Actually, this this colour palette, the, these tones, were some of the first colours I ever used to experiment. So it brings back really nice memories for me and I can look back and see how far I've come. Um, and, you know, I never dreamt that I'd be making videos one day. I never dreamt that I'd be selling my art. And I never dreamt that I'd have so many friends in the artistic 
and creative community um, all around the world. I'm so, I, I feel so privileged to be um, collaborating with some of them. And, you know, I, like you, watch YouTube all the time to get inspiration and ideas from everyone. So I just wanted to share that with you because, you know, it's very, it's very easy really to forget where you've come from and, and what you've achieved. So really good memories for me. So I just wanted to share that. So as you can see, I'm now at the top of my cup with the the black, gold and white um, layering. And I'm going to slowly pour that out. And I'm also going to make one smaller cup with those same colours because I think I'm going to need a little bit more paint for this size canvas. So I'm at the top of the cup. Let's get pouring. So here we go, look at those colours. Delicious. I'm ready to, uh, I'm ready to pour. Okay, so on my base, I think I'm just going to do um, three, sh three stripes of one, one of the white. And then I'm going to do one of the gold. And then I'm going to do one of the black. And then I'm going to just pour all of the uh, the paint that I've got in my cups over the top. But first of all, let me just stretch this out a little bit. Just so it's got a little bit of movement. I haven't uh, painted my sides because I'm confident that as I stretch out, um, I've got enough paint in my cups to have full coverage. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let's do it. Oh God, I'm really nervous. <laughs> There's me saying this is such a simple technique, but I love the I love the results that you can get. Okay, just splodge it on the canvas. Okay, so I'm just gonna just go round the canvas. So traveling straight pour. I'm just gonna go over that paint there. So as you can see, some of the obviously the white and the black. Um, kind of creates the grey colour and there's quite a lot of that I can see um, it's gonna, there's some really interesting um, really interesting lines and designs look at that okay empty so I'm glad I, I made this smaller cup so I'm just gonna pour this all the way through and obviously the design is going to change when I stretch it out so I want to try and keep some of those lines at the bottom there uh, just very conscious that the uh, the paint that I have on the sides uh, will go off the canvas anyway so I'm just going to fill in some of those gaps I'm loving some of this gold that I've got on here um, makes me want to use this color palette again and do a completely different technique and a completely different design okay so I'm happy with this I think I'm going to stretch this out Okay, so in my mind, I'm just I'm just deciding what what end I'm going to stretch first, how I'm going to tilt. Obviously, I'm I'm practicing still with camera angles, guys. So if I go off camera, apologies. Um, I know it can be really frustrating, but um, when you're in the zone and you're and you're stretching your design out, you know you kind of forget everything else. So I'm just going to put some gloves on and then I'm going to start stretching. I love these lines along here. I really, really want to keep those. So I just need to bear that in mind. And I love this. I love the gold. And I actually love the pure black that's on there. It's great to, to have some of the white and the black um, kind of gel together for the grey. But the, the pure black is also quite a striking colour on its own. Okay. I'm really hoping you can see some of this. Okay, so obviously I keep moving the paint back into the center because I don't want all my paint to go off one side and then I don't have any other paint left on the creation to stretch across the other side. So that's why you see me going back and forth, back and forth. So over this corner and then I'm moving the paint back onto the canvas into the middle. Look at that, look at that gold. I love that. 
So using Liquitex for as a... Uh, as a change really and you I can really really tell the kind of the gloss medium that it is um it is very different to work with okay so just off on this corner that's it wow every time I do a piece I'm like oh this is my new favorite I'm going to use this technique again I'm going to use this color palette again and then I'll go on to something else and yeah I think we all do that, don't we? Um, it's always good to remember um, some of the colour palettes and some of the techniques because it's always also good to revisit those colour palettes and try a different technique and see what else you, you can create with it. Okay, so I've just turned it around. Just move it around one more time. That helps with the balance. So if I'm, if I'm um, stretching out a canvas... I find it easier to kind of pour away from me. So that's good for my balance and, and that, that works for me. So I don't want to lose those lines that you can see just there. So I'm going to just tilt very quickly and very slowly. Um, just to kind of tilt the, the edge off and then bring it back again. Okay, so I'm off that corner. That's it. And then I'm literally bringing the paint back in. I don't want to lose some of that lineage. I'm loving the lineage. Okay. So back over on the other corner. That's one thing that I really love about the kind of the, the consistency that I'm working with. The thicker consistency because... In some ways, it helps me with the control. So I feel like I can control the paint a lot better. I feel like I have more control over it if it was like a, um, if I was doing a Dutch pour consistency using this technique, I don't feel I'd have as, enough control at, at my stage to, um, to create the kind of pattern that I'd want to. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just moving the paint around the canvas just slowly just so I can make sure that there are no kind of big, big puddles. As I say with the puddles, you know, I, I don't want a puddle because that's going to be the area that will dry um, at a different rate than everything else. So, okay, I, I'm happy with this, guys. I'd love to know what you think. So um, drop, drop some comments below. Let me know what you think. If you're going to give this a go, I'd love to see it as well. So tag me and... Um, I'd love to see what you create as well. Okay, so I'm just going, there's just a couple of gaps. I'm just going to take all the drips off the bottom as well. And I'll show you that this time because people have asked me how I do that and, and why I do that. So I'll, I'll show you that very quickly. But I'm just going through now, just covering up some of the gaps. Hey, let me show you the wet version from my point of view. <laughs> what do we think? I love these three tones together. They obviously, uh, I don't know, there's just something about this. I just love that block of golden black just there. And some of the lines, look at these lines. I just love how they've kind of just created. I really, really like this piece. I hope you do too. I've got to see what it looks like dry first before I start saying it's one of my favourites. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. I love that I've managed to get all the design over the edges. I think it's flowed really well. I think it's a good colour combination. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so some people ask me, um, what do I do with the drips going down the edges and how do I clean off, off the sides? So I literally just use a, a palette knife or a spatula and I just go along the edges taking those drips off and I take those drips off because I don't want the design to be dragged from the top of the canvas down the sides and off the canvas. So that's why I do it. Okay, so let me show you some close-ups of the dried version. It dried very quickly. Um, it has changed in its appearance, but I actually really love it. I love some of the detail and I'll I'll zoom in shortly just to show you that detail. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, obviously working with Liquitex gives that gloss finish before varnishing anyway, 
but I just love some of these details that I've managed to capture. I love how the piece, as it's dried organically, has kind of transformed into, you know, a, a very unique kind of um, creation. Yeah, I really, really like it. Um, some of the details, look at, look just there. That's not cracking either. Then uh, that is just, um, it's just the finished product. It's very smooth. I've, I've been really lucky. There's no lumps or cracks. It's just the different kind of uh, textures that I, I guess that it's created. I'm happy with this one, guys. I hope you like it too. Let me know what you think. I hope to uh, see you again soon. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and have a great week. Bye for now.